Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Varsity Tutors Star Course Series, where today we are so excited to be joined by the very talented Joe Whale, though you may know him as Doodle Boy. From canvas to walls and shoes to guitars to his very own book illustrations, Doodle Boy has gained a following teaching us all that the world is your canvas, literally. With oodles of doodles and just as much creativity, Joe is here today to show us how we can unlock our own creativity and make the world our canvas. Now, before I pass things along to Joe, I want to make sure that everyone is prepared to make the absolute most out of today's live lesson. So, a couple of things to keep in mind. Now, we mentioned that this is a doodle along, so we would like you to doodle along with us. And while we said that the world is your canvas, the world is your canvas with a parent's permission, so please don't start taking any Sharpies to any walls. Make sure that you have an approved writing surface and something to write with, whether that is pen and paper, markers, or maybe something a little more creative, as long as a parent's okay with that. Now, throughout the lesson, Joe's going to have some questions for you as well, and chances are you'll have some questions for him. So feel free to use the chat button on the right-hand side of your screen to ask and answer questions throughout the lesson. If we don't get to those questions right away, not to worry, we're gonna save a couple of minutes at the end of the lesson specifically for Q&A with Joe. You'll also wanna be sure that you have your cameras close by because toward the end of the lesson, we're gonna have the opportunity to lean into the screen and pose for a selfie with Joe and if you've doodled, doodled along, the things that you've doodled along. And if you post those selfies on Instagram and you tag Joe, as well as us here at Varsity Tutors, you'll be entered to win a one month subscription to, to Sketch Masters Club as well as an art kit. Now, I'll be in and out throughout the lesson. We know that doodling can be some pretty focused work. So as you have questions, I'll be here to guide Joe on what we're seeing in the chat from those questions and to have him ask some questions of his own. So you'll see me back in just a little bit. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and hand things off to your instructor for today, Joe Whale, the Doodle Boy. Hello guys, um, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Joel, aka the Doodle Boy, and I'm from Shrewsbury in England. Um, I love drawing on all sorts of different things. I like drawing on woods like this and adding colour. I like drawing on canvases and also this wall behind me that I did today. And uh, today I'm going to use an A3 piece of paper to draw along with you guys uh, for a win winter themed doodle. So, and what I really want to know guys is what materials you're using. So obviously I'm using an A3 piece of paper. Um, so like, if you want to send in some uh, things of what you're doing, that'd be great. So as well as that, um, I'm gonna uh, be drawing some winter theme things. So anytime you want to pop in an idea, that'd be great. And I'll see it in the chat, so I'll be able to put that into my doodle. So uh, on the chat, we've got markers, pencils, and crayons, which is really good. I'm using a black Posca, um, which are uh, paint pens. So I'm gonna start. So feel free to put in your ideas for some winter themed things around you. I'm gonna start with some hot chocolate. Um, to a round circle to the top of the cup. And then handle. Like there. And I might do straw coming out as well. Like this, and stripes. Um, then I like doing faces and stuff in my characters uh, to bring them to life as well. I, I find that really fun. So I'm just gonna draw the legs and the arms. Um, I've also got in the chat, I've got some snow, so I might do snowball green orange. 
Iya. Oke. And another thing I like to draw, and I think it's really good to add to my characters, is lines to show movement. Um, and I think they're really helpful in my drawings. Um, as well as that, I've got some holiday decorations. So if I think of de decorations, I think of stockings, I think it's stars. So I'm going to draw a stocking right here and add the eye. And then do the mouth as well. Add the other one. His leg. And then, as well as this, I'm going to do gingerbread man because I love drawing them and I love eating them as well. So that's good. Like that, and then do the bottoms. And as well, guys, um, one of the things I use a lot, if I'm uh, doing a big piece, I use a thicker pen. And then a smaller piece, I may use a thinner pen. And as well, I use a thinner pen for detail. So I'm going to go in with a thinner Oscar pen to add the icing. And I do that a lot to add more detail to my drawings and it makes them look very cool. So I recommend you doing that in your drawings as well. So I might do present here as well. Maybe chocolate bar, something like that. And then as well, might do the mountain. I love drawing these snow cat mountain. So as you're doodling, we've got some really wonderful questions coming in already, and we're already starting to see both in your background and in some of the doodles that you have in your new winter themed doodle, some pretty typical shapes turned into something pretty magical. So we had some students who are wondering, and I know we've spoken in the past, how do you get the inspiration to turn simple shapes like maybe triangles and squares and circles into something amazing? Well, yeah, guys, um, I think um, if you're wondering, I normally start with simple shapes like this mountain started off with um, just a triangle and then I think of ideas and it just comes to me and like over time uh, of the character, I add more detail, as I said, a thinner pen or I just add more detail with a thick one. So when I'm doing doodles, a lot of them would be simple shapes turned into um, more detailed ones. I, I drew this triangle and I wasn't really sure what to make it. What, what, what should I draw? So you've got a nose of a snowman. That's interesting. So I thought I'd do that. That's cool. The eyes and then see the carrot. Then 
，这个库号，那不可以。Then three. Snowball, and then it's gonna have stick arms like this. Yeah, and I'm also gonna do a sled. Um, find them fun to draw, and they're also really cool to ride. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna go in with a thinner pen to. Add the lines. This sled, like that. Add the eyes as well and the mouth. So after I've done the shape of the character, normally what I do, I'd add the expression, and then I'd add. The detail, so um, like the arms and the movement of the arms. Um, what I'm going to do next, guys, um, you feel free to uh, pop in some ideas. Um, I'm going to do a penguin because that, that really simple uh, signifies winter to me as well. So up here, kind of draw simple shape again. Um, and then carry it back down. And then just add detail function. So the wing and then on. This process would just repeat. So I'd have thinner pen that, you know, maybe even cold drink or something. And um, now I think I'm gonna draw a monster here because I like drawing monsters, aliens, and food the most. So they're my three favorite things to draw. So I might draw a monster here with a snowball. And then there's other arm here. And then in the distance, so I draw him smaller, is another monster or another alien. And with antenna. Launching the snowball at him. And then go in with a pen. Like that. Um, add some expression, maybe face. And I've also in the chat, I've got some winter boots. So I might do some some walking boots, um, some fluffy ones. So I'll do the top and then come down into a boot sort of shape at the bottom as well. Uh, then add eyes. Like that, and maybe like coming out, so it's walking, and maybe add some expression as well, and some texture lines. There we go. 
and also got a hockey stick. And this also leads me on to a question I like to ask, which is what sort of things do you like to do in winter and what things do you find fun? Like I find having hot chocolate and running around in the snow, having snowball fights, that sort of thing I find fun. So I'd like to know what you guys find fun at winter. Yeah. Gonna have quite a few legs. And the thing that really helps me fill space is doing like zigzags and swirls. And that really helps me fill in space for my dudes. And we've got some things like skiing, sledding, snowball fights, and snow angels. So I, that's a really good one. So I like doing that as well. I might actually draw a snow angel. And like this. All right, Joe, and as you're drawing your snow angel and we're seeing that we're starting to fill up some of the, the space on the page, we have lots of students who are drawing along and taking inspiration both from your ideas and from the ideas of everybody else in the chat as you're, as you're noting them. We did have some students who were saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite as much of an expert and sometimes my triangles don't quite look as clean as Joe's triangles. So we wanted to know, what do you do when you make a mistake? Well, guys, um, I think, I don't really think of a mistake as a mistake. What I'd normally do, I'd try to alter them. So, um, like I drew the triangle earlier, I didn't know what to turn it into. So I thought, like, let's ask the people and see what they think. So the main thing for me when I make a mistake is to alter it. Like, don't change it. I mean, don't like take the piece of paper, roll it up and throw it in the bin. Like, it's fine. It's not like, you just gotta be positive. So when I make a mistake, I don't be negative. I just be full, fully positive. So if I drew, another like a circle here and I've already drawn a snowball and I didn't know what to change it into and it was sort of a mistake like what do I think of winter so I think maybe a bauble on a Christmas tree so it's that easy you've just got to experiment with different things you could alter and then so there's no right or wrong so even if you do not you're not happy with something um like just change it and see how it goes so that's my ball ball so that's really helpful for me uh i've also got Christmas wreath. So in my drawings, I like to be positive. Um, that really helps me to create cool pieces. Do some holly as well. And um, if you're having trouble filling in space, depending on what you're drawing on, um, then I'd advise to use a thicker pen or use scale. And over the time that I've been drawing and doodling, I find it really helpful 
if I expand my scale to make the characters slightly bigger, so it's easier to fill space and it still looks as good. So there's the roof there. And then I might do snowman melting a bit as well. That would be cool. Hmm. What else could I draw, guys? So, if you've got any ideas, um, put them in the chat and then I'll see you. Oh, we've got snowboard. That's cool. I'll do, I'll do that. So, again, just a simple, simple shape. And then turn it into something and add more detail. Snowboard. Could be a nice wintry snowboard. Chill. It's cool. And then maybe some snowflakes around it. Add more detail as well. Obviously, we started talking about this just a moment ago, but it does look like we're starting to get into some of the margins of our page. So, could you talk to us a little bit more about? how you decide what goes on the middle of the page, what goes on the edges and how to fill in the spaces. So I know we've got kind of a special situation where you're just taking requests as we go, but normally when you brainstorm your doodle, how do you figure out what goes where? Um, well, in my doodles, um, normally what happens is I think of one character and then I normally draw it central, central depending on how I feel, but then, um, what I do, I think of one character at a time, um, and that would fill my space. So after one thing, I do another thing and sp gradually spread it out. So that's that's how I form a doodle and how I fill space quite quick. Um, speaking of that, how is how is everyone doing? Are you are you having fun? Yeah, because I am. And um, like, even if you're not an expert, it doesn't matter. It, like, it's really fun. I just love doing it. That's the main reason I do it. Not just because um, like I devote a lot of time to it. Like if I love something, I'll do it. And I think uh, whatever you love, you should do it as well. You should do the same. Down here, I might do a woolly hat as well. Add some movement lines as well, so they're thinner pen. And again, do some swirls and stuff in the space. Let's 
some more things. I've got a snow shovel and some mittens, so I'll do them as well. Try to fit in much ideas as possible. Snow shovel. And then I might do snow as well. Like this. Then add the eyes and the mouth, and then the movement. We've also got the mittens, so I'll add them in around the wood. Obviously, you can't have one mitten, so I'm going to draw the other one. And then add the arms and legs. That also got a fireplace, so I'd say I'll do one here. So I'll do five there, and I might do like an outdoor style one with logs. And as well, guys, I'd, I'd like to know like where you're drawn from, where, where you're tuning in from. Um, as I said, I'm in England, so the weather is quite chilly here at winter. Um, yeah, so I'd like to know where you guys are as well. Wow, we've got a lot of uh, quick things here. So we've got Liverpool, Florida, Boston, Chicago, New York, Minneapolis. Wow, that's a lot of places. We've got Colorado as well. Seattle, there's a lot of places. That's cool that you're all from different, different places. It's very cool. Um, also, I'm gonna draw monster here as well. Now, Joe, as you're drawing and as we're filling in those final spaces, you talked to us at the very beginning of today's lesson about some of the things that you do to help your characters come to life. We had some students who were wondering, Meh, their characters aren't quite coming to life the same way. What sorts of things can they do? What techniques do you use to help your characters pop, to help them come to life? Um, so the main things I use to really help my characters pop and like stand out would be uh, movement so like if they're running if they're like tired and emotions as well really help and yeah expressions so an angry face and especially size as well so if I want one thing to stand out one thing to really come to life if someone looks at it I draw it bigger or with a thicker pen to make it stand out so that's normally uh, what I would use so like I'll I'll show Andy face here. So I've also got a scarf or colour light. So I'll do scarf. Um, 
and then use kind of pen to stay on. And then, so draw angry expression, and then a mouth wide open. And like, I'd imagine like a person or myself like that, and then I draw it how I I how I'd see it. And that really helps me get expression from my characters. And then fill in spaces. And remember guys, one thing I always forget and my dad always has to remind me, only sometimes do I actually put it in, is my name. I always forget my name. So I'm just, I'm going to sign it now. So I don't forget. So wait. And maybe just to finish off, I'll do some and stuff in the corner. And the lines and stuff, they don't have to be all detailed, they can just be simple. Um, but I normally put a lot of them and it makes it look really cool. Just finishing up. And I think I'm done, guys. Um, um, I can't see yours as well, so I'm really excited to see yours as well, see what you've, you've created. That is so fantastic. We've got lots of wonderful participation from students who are having so much fun, some of whom are, who are still wrapping up they're doodles, so they're, they're not quite as quick as you in putting everything together. So as you guys are wrapping up your doodles, we wanna make sure everyone has the opportunity for that selfie. And then we've got a couple more questions for Joe. So as a quick reminder, if you post those selfies on Instagram and you tag us here at Varsity Tutors, as well as Joe, I'll put that information up on screen at the close of the class. You will be entered to win an art kit as well as a one month subscription to Sketch Masters Club, where you can learn all about how to doodle, sketch, draw, whether you want to do so on paper or the materials around you. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and hand things back over to Joe so that he can pose for that selfie for you. Yeah, so I'm gonna turn around my picture. Just have it here. Then maybe do like a pointing one as well. And then also one, maybe stand up slightly. And then one more just looking down. That is wonderful. Thank you, Joe. And if you haven't had your chance to get your selfie just yet, not to worry. Joe is uh, showcasing lots of his artwork even behind him. So as we do some Q&A, you're welcome to take that selfie then as well. We've got lots of wonderful questions that have come in. And uh, one of the questions that we got most frequently is we've got students who are wondering, how old are you? And how long have you been drawing for? Um, well, I'm now 12 years old, but I've been drawing, well, I've loved drawing really since I was very young, so like maybe three or four, and I've just been like drawing lots over the years, and when I was seven, I sort of, I was drawing more realistically before, so I like drawing um, like what I saw, but when I was seven, I thought I'd try sort of a dueling technique so a more cartoony style and uh i just carried that on um and it, i really loved it 
And when I was nine, that's when I became the doodle boy. Um, and ever since then, like loads of jobs have come up and wars as well. I love doing them and all sorts of things. Um, and that's when I started and I literally loved art all of my life. Wow, well, you can certainly tell. And speaking of those jobs and those walls, we have lots of students who are big fans of yours and who follow a lot of your work and have seen some of those great big walls of work that you've done, who are wondering, we saw you put a doodle together in 30 minutes. How long does it take you to do a great big doodle like a wall? Um, well, the first wall I ever did was for a local, um, a local restaurant uh, near where I lived. So that took me about 12 hours. So every day after school, I do an hour or so. But that was because uh, like of the pens and the size. But over time, I've adapted to scale and I've learned uh, scaling. So maybe four hours, maybe three, um, depending on the size. So it's definitely come down quite a lot. So yeah, three or four hours, I'd say. Yeah, and I think students have definitely seen that the more and more you practice, the more the more you can become a little bit quicker and a little bit cleaner with how those lines look, as we can clearly see from all of your work. Uh, now, we also had some students who were wondering, as you were putting all those expressions on all of your characters, how do you determine what the expressions and what the movement and all those actions look like? How do you determine which ones are goofy and which ones are smiling and which ones are running and which ones are in place? Um, well, normally uh, I determine it from the face. Um, so I do the face depending on how I feel. Like if I felt happy, I do a more happy view. But if I like was trying new ideas, I experiment with new things. So the face would normally be what starts the expression and then I move it on to the action so like if he was annoyed I do sort of annoyed an annoyed face and then maybe his hand like here um and if it was tired like hands there and then do a sleepy face so um action and expression that's how I use emotion very cool. So probably some some hungry faces and a couple more slices of pizza when you're feeling a little hungrier too. <laughs> awesome. Now we had lots of students who are also wondering what some of your other favorite things to draw on are and where they can go if they want to see more of your art. Um. Well, the things I love to draw on, I just love doing different things. So like words, I like doing words. And I've got some metal as well that I like drawing on, um, as well as canvases. I do quite a lot of them. I do more than usual. Um, and I like, I like drawing aliens, food and monsters the most. So they're what I you'd usually see in my drawings. And where you can find them, you can find them on my Instagram, Facebook, and also like, my website, uh, which is the doodleboy.com, I think. So yeah, there's a lot of my art there and it links to my YouTube channel as well. Um, so they're sort of the places you can see my art as well. Very cool. I know we had lots of students commenting that they've seen some of those YouTube videos where it seems like you put all of that beautiful artwork on the wall super, super quickly, but we can see that it does take some time and you've got to, you know, take breaks to do things like go to school and do homework some of the time as well, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> now, we also had, uh, we had some students who were wondering, what do we do if we run out of space? So do we continue on to another piece of paper? Do we start something new? What if you've got more ideas, but not more space? Well, um, if you have more ideas, I think if you want to carry on the piece, then like before you've done the piece, if you think you, you have a lot of ideas in your head, maybe do a bigger piece. And then if you have less ideas, do a smaller piece. But if you have no space, um, I'd probably recommend starting new and using the ideas that you've got fresh in your head to the next one. 
Very cool. And uh, you mentioned a couple of the things that you were working with in terms of your materi materials and your markers at the very start of the lesson, but we had some students who were hoping to get a reminder. What sorts of tools do you recommend to get interested or get a start at working with art or doodling specifically? Okay, so the main uh, sort of brands that I use, um, so I like using Crayola uh, like colors and black as well. They're pretty cool for when I use colors, but I also use Uni Posca's um, for like the smaller stuff. Like I use these uh, grog pens for the wall. So they're normally for my bigger stuff and they have, um, they're like graffiti pens. So they have different colors as well, like that. And as well for my small stuff, this is more permanent though. Um, it, I like Faber Castle as well. Um, so these are the Faber Castle multi marks. So I use them quite a lot as well. So they're the main sort of tools I use. Very cool. And I think you talked a little bit about this a little earlier too. But as a reminder, do you always use markers or do you ever use stuff that you can erase? Um, well, I really don't uh, agree with erasers. Um, I think if I were to use one or I've when I've used one before, um, it encourages me to rub out. So that's why I go a pen straight onto paper because it teaches me to alter what I've done rather than erase it. So yeah, I don't use rubbers or pencil at all. Absolutely. And we saw earlier some really creative ideas for how we could take a shape that maybe started out as a mistake, but had the potential to become something really wonderful. And how could you know that if you just erased it? That is super cool. Now, we, uh, we also had some students who were wondering, when you try to, to fine tune your art and you try to improve and you try to practice, are there any other things that you do or do you mostly just brainstorm and doodle? Um. Things I like to do, I just like to experiment with new things and if I enjoy them, I do them more and so practice really um, is the main thing that I do and I normally practice the, the main things I like to draw. So if you see something and like you want to draw it, then like practice that and if I'm stuck for drawing as well, I use my surroundings as well. I use my surroundings to draw. Absolutely. Now we have lots of students who are having an absolute blast and who are putting the finishing touches on their artwork as well. So by all means, if you didn't get your artwork in with that selfie, feel free to include it in your post. We would love to see all of your doodling and all the inspiration that you've gotten from Doodle Boy. Now, as one final question, Joe, do you have any other final thoughts or final pieces of advice for students who are interested in art, interested in learning from you and doing the sorts of things that you like to do? Um, well, I think art is very fun and in art you can't do anything wrong. So if you think you've made a mistake, um, just alter something, make it, make it look cooler than you, what you actually intended to. Um, and also there's, there's no right and wrong. So start and start with something simple and then develop it into something more detailed. Awesome. Well, thank you so much once again, Joe. Thank you to all of our students who chimed in and told us what a wonderful time they were having and all of the details and all of the wonderful ideas that gave us inspiration for our winter draw along. Now we're going to be seeing Joe back for another class sometime soon. But yeah. in the meantime, we hope to see everybody back in another Varsity Tutor Star Course and we cannot wait to see all of your wonderful artwork. So don't forget to post those selfies on Instagram and tag oh, us right. here at Varsity Tutors as well as Joe. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.